Church family, you may have a seat. I was at the uh, Rays game yesterday with uh, our middle son, Caleb, when someone next to us uh, announced that former President Trump uh, had been shot. Uh, Probably like you yesterday afternoon, you were started to receive text messages and notifications, uh, regardless of what TV station you were watching, uh, news started to confirm that that was indeed true, that former President Trump had been shot. And let me just say um, that I am heartbroken for our nation. Uh, It's a time for us as a nation to humble ourselves. Uh, to turn from our wicked ways and for us to pray. You know, in times like these, I believe that we are reminded more so than at any other time that prayer is more than just a necessity, that it has to be a priority. And we uh, were encouraged in Scripture, instructed in Scripture, that we are to pray for one another. And especially we are to pray for those in authority over us. But we are also called to live peaceable. Uh, We are called to love one another and to strive to live quiet lives in godliness and holiness. So let me say this morning that regardless of your political leanings or your personal beliefs or opinions of either of the candidates for election in November that we do not resolve our differences in America with acts of violence. Uh, We must stand together against violence. And we, as people of peace, have to advocate for peace. So we pray for peace. Uh, We pray for protection over our nation and that we would turn back to the Lord and back to truth and back to God's leadership and lordship over us. You know, I believe that we are still just on the front end of a political season that all of us knew was going to be controversial and divisive. Uh, Several weeks ago, when we were in our series called Ambassadors, uh, Pastor Chris preached a message on politics. Uh, And if you have not heard that, let me just beg you, urge you, please go and listen. Uh, But an assassination attempt on a president of the United States, former or current, Democrat or Republican, uh, is an attack on our nation, and I would also say on the plans of God. And I agree with all of the statements that were made last night by other former presidents, including our current president, that there is no place for this kind of behavior and nonsense in this country. Uh, This amazing country, the land of the free and the home of the brave. And speaking of brave, uh, the brave people who disregard their own lives for the protection of another person's life are nothing short of heroic. And we have many men and women who are part of our church congregation who also uh, work for us. And every day we know they do the same thing. It's inspiring. Uh, That is to say it breeds life into. You know, we use the term expire when uh, uh, something has expired its due date. uh, When something has outlived its life date. And that's what is so amazing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That even after 2,000 years, it still inspires. That it is the only thing that breathes life into anyone. That every single one of us, we were dead in our sins and trespasses. It wasn't that we were just bad. It wasn't that we needed behavior modification. We were dead. And when Jesus breathed his life breath on the cross and said, it is finished, it was in that resurrection that he breathes life back into us so that we can experience life. You know, many of our uh, political leaders yesterday spoke out, but we as a people of the way, we have to choose a different way than just speaking. Uh, We have to demonstrate. We have to show love despite political differences. 
You know, that's the beauty of a democracy. All week, for those of you who are part of the Bible app, um, the verse of the day has come from 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13 is known as the love chapter. The final couple of verses say these. And these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And if the greatest good for ourselves, for our families, for our friends, for mankind in general is found in the love of God, in the perfect plans and purposes of God, then that truly is love. You know, many of you had to have conversations with family members, especially kids yesterday. Many questions. I would turn to Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. You know, uh, on any um, social media feed yesterday, almost everyone, including again, all of our former presidents and current presidents, they reached out to us as Americans to do what we as Christ followers should be doing anyway. And that is to pray, to pray. Many of you uh, reached out to us personally, to myself and Chris and uh, others on our staff and asked, are we going to pray for our country? And and that's what we're going to do. We're about to move into a moment uh, where we are going to lift up this country in which we live and which we love. But I would also say that's what we have been doing. That's what we are doing. And that's what we will continue to do. But I pray that we as Christ followers are more Christ following than we are Democrat or Republican. And I pray that we as a United States will not become a divided states. And most important, church, followers of Christ, I pray for revival. I pray for an awakening inside of us. You know, we need a gospel movement. Salvation to spring up in South Tampa and beyond. For the Spirit of God to sweep through our land. And may we be seeking Jesus and only Jesus, for in Him is our true and only hope. So let's let Christ be the light in us that we want to see in the world. I remember that little song that kids used to sing. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So many of us, for so many different reasons, have instead uh, hidden that light under a bushel. We've placed that light in a place that only we see on a Sunday morning. So have mercy on us, Lord, because we need Jesus. Christ, the solid rock, we need to stand on the truth of God's word. Because all other ground, including political, is nothing but sinking sand. So this morning, we're going to join together. And we're going to pray for our country. Uh, We need the peace that can only be found in Jesus. So we want to pray uh, for protection uh, for our uh, leaders of our country, leaders of our state, leaders of our city. We want to pray for those yesterday who were injured, uh, for families who lost loved ones. We want to pray uh, for all people of every political party to come to know the saving power of Jesus. We want to pray for unity in our neighborhoods and in our nations. Ultimately, we want to pray that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This morning, uh, prayer time can be whatever you need it to be. If you want to sit there silently in your chair, please feel free to do so. For some of you, you may want to simply just turn around and maybe use your chair as an altar today. Or something that we used to do in church years gone by that we just don't do much anymore for some of you. You may just want to come to the altar of this church and just Lay your petitions and your burdens, sorrows before the Lord. 
So if you desire to come forward and pray here, if you want to stay in your seat, if you want to turn around and kneel by your chair, whatever you want to do, can we enter into a time of prayer? Let's pray. For those of you who want to come forward here at the altar, stand and walk, come here. For those of you who want to take a moment just to stand up, turn around, kneel at your chair, your seat there. Father, in uh, times like these and days in which we're living, many people stressed out, depressed, anxious. And then, God, we see something that unfolded before our very eyes, and Lord, there's just more unrest. Lord, for others, there is this anger, rage inside that wants to lash out fight back. God, you've called us to be different. God, you've called us to be distinct. God, to live our lives in such a way that others notice that there's a difference. Lord, that difference isn't that we've gone to uh, behavior modification school. That difference isn't we've just quit doing the things we used to do. God, that difference is the spirit of the living God dwells in us. We desire to follow the example of Christ the King, our Savior. Lord, the more we look into the Gospels, the more we realize that is a hard life to follow. God, it wasn't so much that you ever got upset with people, with politics. God, as much as you did with people playing religion, the Pharisees, Sadducees, those who use church, those who spoke of you and yet did not know you. Lord, may that not be. God, may we be a people that are desperate for you, chasing after you. God, desire to know more of you, to live for you, to glorify you, to speak of you. God, would you bring salvation to our land? God, where there would be true repentance, conversions. God, would you do what you've done before and what you can do now. Lord, we sing that you are a way maker. Lord, we pray that even now you would make a way for the gospel to rise up. Lord, help us to lift you up so that more and more people can be drawn into yourself. God, we pray for the days, the weeks, yes, Lord, the months to come. That, Lord, you would help us to live, to act, and to be with love, mercy, and justice. Lord, we pray for our land. God, we pray for those who are in authority over us. God, we pray for those who protect us. God, we pray for every family represented here today in every neighborhood of this nation. Lord Jesus, that you would be known. So God, help us to make you known. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hey, this morning uh, we're starting a brand new sermon series, and we've asked Pastor Chris to come and uh, kick us off, start that this morning. Again, I just want to say God bless you. Uh, Thank you for being here today. And let's keep prayer as a priority for the people of this land. God bless you.